I'm a board member in 8020. I was just elected uh, this past fall. And I have been a life member for many years, most likely since its founding. I have been a professor at Harvard Medical School and a dean at New York University. And currently, I am retired, but associated with the California Institute of Technology, where I am like a visiting professor. Uh, I continue to consult in science and with institutions, especially new institutions, that want to do research in science. I have just been elected to be president of the American Association for the Advancement of Science for 2010 to 11. When the communists came to China, my family had a choice of going to almost any other country in the world. And we chose the United States. And that's because we saw in it an open society, democracy for all, and great opportunity for us and for our children. I can't imagine living in some other place. Its ideals are all the ideals that we believe in. And we want to ensure that the United States lives up to the best that it can be. 8020 will support those groups that believe in equal opportunity and access for all Americans and deny those individuals who do not believe in that. Uh, the name doesn't quite tell you everything, uh, and I explained it as a political action committee, uh, which really has a very simple directive, and that is to support political candidates, as well as to provide leadership for the United States and to ensure that these people will either get elected or appointed to important positions where they can have a voice. When I was a child, I realized that growing up in the United States in the 50s and 60s, that my aspirations to be anything that I wanted was really somewhat limited and that for certain reasons and largely because of how I looked that I probably could not go into certain jobs or certain professions. Realizing this, I also began to read a little bit about how immigrants were being treated in the United States it was a shock to me to discover that those individuals who came from China to work on the railroads in this country were subjected to all sorts of laws that prevented them from owning property, getting married, and to the extent that even at times they were totally excluded by law. I think what struck me most was what happened to the Japanese during the Second World War. It was unthinkable to me that innocent people who were born in this country, who were thoroughly American in the way that they thought and lived, were still treated as potential enemies of the U.S. government and just rounded up en masse depending on how they looked and what their ancestorship was. And put into uh, camps away from the coast. I didn't want that to happen to me. I am a naturalized citizen in the United States, and I didn't want that to happen to my children. And I felt that there were things that I had to do that would pre prevent any of this from ever happening again in the United States. We all know that, that as a country, we have wonderful opportunities and, and doors are open for us to pursue many different goals. But we also know that we often undergo a mass hysteria and do things that are totally irrational when we think about it later on. 
And I want to make sure that 8020 works to provide the leadership in this country that will prevent anything like this happening again. Well, in my own profession, uh, there are many Asian scientists who have done extremely well. In fact, we graduate a larger proportion of Asian American children in the scientific professions. However, if you look at the top levels of academia, we are not very well represented in, in those, at those levels. So we've called this the bamboo ceiling in the fact that, yes, we are recognized as being very good workers, but to become the chief honcho in a particular situation at an institution, it will still likely go to someone who looks more mainstream in this country. Some years ago, I recognized that Asian Americans in this country have begun to do very well economically, that many of the second and third generations are in well-paying professions. And I recognized that it was important that we really take part in this society in a more substantive way. That is, by giving to charities that we think are important, by participating in the democracy, by taking on responsibilities for the common good. And we have to do that, or else we will be marginalized in this country if we don't play the role that we should and that our economic welfare permits us to do. If you are the palm tree that's taller than any other, that palm tree may well be blown over in the next hurricane. And I think that's uh, actually a Pacific Island saying, but it's almost in every Asian language there is a similar metaphor like that. And so we tend to stick close to our families, keep our noses out of other individuals' problems, and fail to act. We need to get out of that. In the United States, we've seen throughout its history that the Italian Americans, the Jewish Americans, many immigrant groups have banded together the ability of the Cuban Americans to affect politics so well is because they speak with one voice. And for us in the United States, Chinese Americans are too small a group, Indian Americans are too small a group, Koreans, Japanese, we can go on and on with the various Asian groups in this country. We're all split into smaller, and less effective groups. But if we can join together, we form enough of a group that will have clout politically, enough votes in this country to participate in the democracy that has afforded us. And we can make a difference. And I think that what 8020 is trying to do is to guarantee that we have enough leaders in the government, thought leaders, media leaders um, who are aware of the possibility that we can make these types of mistakes and who really want to see that all immigrants and their children, no matter how different they continue to look, and um, that they are citizens that should have all the rights and protection that any other U.S. citizen should have.